What's up guys this is Adam from 3dmoswall.com and welcome to another Maya tutorial and today we're gonna talk about ambient occlusion and Arnold and Maya and we're gonna talk a little bit about the theory behind ambient occlusion and why we use it and then we're gonna dive into Maya and work into applying an ambient occlusion to one of our ships so without further delay let's get started so before we start uh, talking about ambient occlusion how to apply it in Maya first let's look at reference and uh, look at how ambient occlusion apply in real life First of all, ambient occlusion is not a natural phenomena. It's something that we fake in 3D just to get the effects of contact shadow. So for example, in this image, you can see the shadows here under the rope. That's all from the sun, like natural light and shadows. But in 3D, sometimes it's really hard to get like this kind of very refined contact shadow. So that's why we go and create an ambient occlusion pass to simulate this. So you can see it's like like everywhere here there is like a nice a contact shadow between all these details that make it looks really cool and here like also a connection and this is uh, another example i have of like a nice of an ambient occlusion type thing you can do it in 3d of course if you have like a ray trace shadows you will get something like that but still you need like an ambient occlusion pass to get like a more refined details that we're gonna be applying right now I just thought to show you guys this first so we can have a basic understanding of why we're doing this and why we wanna approach that and how to approach that in 3D okay so now we are in Maya and uh, this is the model I'm gonna be using it's the USS Iowa ship it's pretty cool ship and very detailed so it will be pretty good example to use uh, to simulate the ambient occlusion now you can see here ambient occlusion already baked into the diffuse map so we have two diffuse maps for this ship one with just like regular uh, diffuse without ambient and one with ambient baked on it but for now let's just apply uh, the ambient occlusion and then you can use that into the uh, uh, compositing package so that you can add it on okay so let's go to the hyper shade okay so now we have the material here and uh, let's uh, let's hide these lights let's turn them off so now if I render you see there's nothing happening because now I hit the light but to apply ambient occlusion you don't really need the light in your scene in order to see it so let's do that so let's go hyper shade and let's click on Arnold and then we scroll down to the ambient occlusion or if you click on shaders you can see it here in the top so let's click on that and let's zoom out on the viewport select everything and then let's right click on the shader and then assign material to viewport selection okay so let's close that and let's pick an angle that we can see like details like this one and let's render okay so you can see now we have pretty good ambient occlusion already just like by applying the default and that's really good but let's save this one and then let's click on one of the model here and then let's go to the ambient occlusion uh, shader so this way we have all the options here so we're gonna go through a few of these options you know just to talk about the important ones that's gonna make the biggest difference into the look on your scene so first the samples, those basically, in a basic way we can say it controls the quality of your ambient. So the higher the samples, the less noisy it's gonna be. So you can see here there's a loss of noise and if you render it with the basic samples, you might start to getting some uh, noise in your render. So you wanna be careful with the samples. For testing you can keep it low, like this. But when you're gonna do like an actual render, like final render, it's better to increase it as much as your hardware can handle plus your render time and deadline and all this kind of stuff so for now we're just gonna keep it at three the spread let's control how much these shadows like the the darkness between the dark black areas and then the white how much there is spread happening so let's we already saved this image so let's change the spread to let's change 0 0.146 and let's render now you can see the result it looks weird so it looks very very weird but i wouldn't go like this much you keep it like uh, you know above like 600 700 
if you want to adjust uh, how is the contact shadows basically how they're effect so you can see now after i lower the spread down you can see uh, it gets tighter the ambient occlusion but there is no really much difference it's kind of like looks pretty similar so i wouldn't if you want to like adjust the ambient occlusion like how tight it is i wouldn't change it from the spread so let's put it back to one and then the fall off that's really important one that's the one we're going to be using to adjust the ambient occlusion spread let's say like of how much detail the ambient occlusion will be like uh, casting on so now it's zero and uh, let me re-render so we go back to the default okay so now we are back to the default uh, ambient occlusion so now if you want to have the ambient occlusion doesn't spread as much which is important because if you look at the reference here uh, let's say this reference for example you can see it's really like really tight just on the contact and doesn't spread as much like for example here you can see it's spreading like really far like everywhere and that's gonna increase the noise in your render so we don't want to have it like that so let's adjust it through the fall off so now it's uh, zero and if we go like really high numbers you're gonna start also to get some very weird effects so let's put it to like eight and let's save this render and let's compare okay so now you can see when we increase the fall off really high basically there's no ambient occlusion like everything becomes no contact shadows at all so i would highly recommend with the fall off to be careful about these numbers and you're gonna go like really slow of course that's always a, it depends on your scene scale that's always gonna influence how much fall off you're gonna adjust but let's change this to 0.05 like really low and then let's save this one and render okay now it's done rendering so you can see this looks pretty good comparing to let's delete this one comparing to the original one you can see like we get just the shadows basically on all the contact areas and we don't have like shadows spreading too much and that's a good so it become more realistic and uh, looks more uh, natural in my opinion so this is basically a good way to use ambient occlusion just to get these like extra details here because the uh, ray trace shadow sometimes is hard to really pick it up so this way is really nice and uh, as we mentioned before like in the reference so you kind of get kind of this effect now i wouldn't try to increase the density of the ambient occlusion here i just leave it as it is like that and then when I take it to compositing, you can like multiply it and then increase the number of like the strength of the ambient occlusion and also the color of the ambient occlusion. So if you don't want it to be like black, you can have it like a little bit have a bluish tint to it, you know, like uh, a real world situation. So this way you can do that all in comp. So you just need to get like the basic kind of thing working in Maya like this, and then you can take it to the comp and then do the rest over there. So that's it for this tutorial. If you wanna learn more, you can go to 3dmodelsworld.com into the tutorial section. We have a lot of tutorial over there that we're adding every week, and these tutorials, they cover like different topics in Maya. I will highly recommend you to go there, check it out. And I hope this tutorial helped you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, and please subscribe for more future videos. Until next time, take care.